Powerful impact in a cutthroat, high cluttered market space. Our speaker for this session, for this session is Mr. R. Ramakrishnan, who holds the position of the chief China executive no of the Rs. 6,700 crore Polycarb Wires Limited, India's number one cable and wires company. He joined the company in 2012. Prior to Polycab, Mr. Ramakrishnan played a very successful leadership role um, in Bajaj Electricals Limited for 12 years. The company was transformed from a rupees 300 crore company in 1999, 2000 to a 3,000 100 crore company in 2011-12. Mr. Ramakrishnan also has served in Asian Paints for 17 years from 82 to 99 across sales, marketing, supply chain, manufacturing, and new product introduction roads. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Mr. R. Ramakrishnan. Let's give him a round of applause. And of course, uh, we've got, we've got uh, something else happening parallelly. It's uh, the Knowledge Center, 12.30 to 1.30, winning as a digital leader. Mr. Thomas Barter is going to be in the adjacent room. Uh, it's starting at 12.30. If you wish to join that session, please do it there. Good morning, a pleasure being with all of you. I just looked at uh, the word mold and I tried to figure it out. What the dictionary says is it's a hollow container used to give shape to molten or hot liquid material when it cools and hardens. A distinctive and typical style, form or character. A frame or template for producing molding. Breaking the mold is all about breaking out of the routine and thinking differently. So when we are marketing in a digital world, it's much more than just marketing digitally. It's extremely important that we look at the changes that are happening, whether it be cloud computing, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, all these things are bringing in significant changes in terms of the consumer and disrupting the marketplace. Marketing in the digital world is about harnessing automation, making marketing practices more productive and agile, and mining a lot of sources in terms of customer data. And how do we leverage analytics? How do we leverage artificial intelligence? So when it comes to marketing practices in the digital world, we need to look at all these parameters and I'll just cover them in a nutshell. Understanding customers with the changing dynamics of the marketplace, new trends, new brands, target audiences, opportunity, you know, today, a customer can reach you through very different means. The interaction points have increased enormously. And so if you look at the brand touch points, there is everything from promotions to the salesperson to word of mouth to loyalty to customer service and all these are extremely digitizable. Customer journey mapping in terms of figuring out how companies create a detailed graphical representation of the customer journey based on the critical touch points while on the purchase journey and analyzing the behavior, engagement, expectations, gaps in expectations is a very important part. We need to look at using data to understand our customers better, 
look at competitive analysis, look at intent to purchase, analyze the sentiments, both the negative and positive, and intelligent market segmentation. Figuring out what the customers want. Customer review sites, interacting through them with Q&A websites like Quora, online surveys, trend analysis, conducting A-B testing of campaigns that we run on social media, and how well you connect with them, how well you relate to them. Clearly, engaging customers, there is so much of content. There is so much of competitive intensity. And there are so many things that are shouting for attention. 50% of the market is engaging with content such as videos, GIFs, 360 degree image, filters, Facebook, Instagrams, and experimenting with all these formats becomes essential. So within this maze, you need to create your own unique niche. The niche is a moving target. And if you look at the passion, the strength, the market needs, and you arrive at what is your USP, that's the intersection. And being consistent in terms of whatever you do. Taking a long-term orientation, taking a stance, and doing what is right, and doing it rightly, is what will lead you there. Consistency in your branding via words, design, offerings, or perspective. And your brand should build awareness and develop a true and truth and loyalty. I think those are the two critical things. I think what I'm going to do now, obviously in this paradigm, advertising as we know it is undergoing a change. It is probably the end of advertising as we have known it for the last five decades. Outmoded messages, outmoded way of delivering messages will give diminishing returns in the digital sphere. Brands that are staying ahead of the curve develop immersive campaigns and today customer engagement is what really matters. Consumers have clearly grown wary of interruptions. Marketers are frustrated with digital ads. People aren't engaging with ads. Let's look at some of the numbers. 51% of Indian internet users block ads on any device each month. 122 million users block mobile ads in India. 0.18% is the average display ad click-through rate in India. It's even lower abroad. So where is all that money going? Is it yielding as what we want? What should a brand do? We can remember some of the catchy jingles on radio. You remember them because they did something differently. They thought outside the box to grab your attention. They broke the mold. And hence, we are discussing about breaking the mold. Let me take a few examples of what I believe is world-class stuff done in terms of breaking the mold. Probably the biggest and the most interactive that I've come across is Starbucks. The Shanghai Roastery is one of its kind store to seamlessly integrate a real-time in-store and online consumer experience powered by Alibaba's mobile Taobao app and AR technology. Visitors use the app to scan different parts of the store and they get engaged with the trivia, they get engaged with the process of coffee, coffee making, and what's in store information. So let's have a look at that. When it comes to Starbucks, China is no different than the U.S. It's everywhere. In fact, with a store opening every 15 hours, China is the fastest growing market for Starbucks. But for its newest location here in Shanghai, Starbucks wanted something more than just ubiquity. The Seattle Cafe turned global brand has delivered something bigger and better this time with help from Alibaba. Welcome to the biggest Starbucks in the world. This new location in Shanghai comprises two floors, 30,000 square feet, and it will put as many as 400 employees to work. 
This is the second Starbucks Reserve Roastery in the world. The first is in Seattle, but this location in Shanghai is the first to provide a fully interactive new retail experience for consumers based in augmented reality. And it's all powered by Alibaba's technology. Here's how it works. Visitors use the mobile Taobao app to scan different parts of the store as a way to engage with the AR features. Then the app delivers fun visuals, information about products, even how the roasting process works to their phones. For example, let's look at the roasting process in augmented reality. Fresh beans are stored in these silos and then they drop down here to the roaster. After the roasting is completed, they move to the cooler. And once that's done, they move up to this giant two-story storage tank at the heart of the store. The beans stay there for seven days, which is when they reach their peak taste. Then they get distributed through these tubes to the different coffee bars in the store. There's a lot more to discover at this Starbucks with my mobile Taobao app. I can also scan these coffee silos to find out what kind of beans they're serving at this bar. Or I can scan this steampunk at the tea bar to see what it does. Each step of the way, customers unlock a virtual badge, and once all the badges are earned, they receive a custom roastery filter to commemorate the moment and share on social media. Shanghai Roastery also gets a boost from Alibaba's location-based technology. Tmall knows when one of its app users enters the store, and it brings up a special page that offers fun features, like a map of the store or a menu of the different copies available. And if they want, customers can even book curated tours and coffee tastings too through Tmall. Starbucks says that this is their most ambitious project yet, and customers are going to get the chance to experience it on December 6th. Imagine the level of engagement that they are driving through this process. Just imagine the level of interaction, the level of fun, the level of uh, messaging and how the brand keeps growing as a consequence. Let me just say that engaging experiences built around the product makes it more intriguing. The brand should focus on the experience and not necessarily making themselves the stars. The experience is the star. The brand just happens to be embedded in the experience. Experiences give customers reasons to engage with the brand and help the brand build custom. Attract more people to the brand. Attract more favorable word of mouth. Create talking points in the digital world. I think, and that is what makes this Starbucks case that much unique. Let me go on to conversational marketing. KLM had a... Yeah, guys, keep it on, no? Nothing wrong with the mic. You just have to give the volume output. I have done nothing to it. Check. Check. Okay. Conversational marketing. KLM Royal Dutch Airlines came up with something phenomenal. It was something called happy to help. In a very crowded travel market where customers are just looking for the cheap fares, KLM decided to do something different. They looked at prospective customers and they ex encouraged them to experience an exceptional service standard and thereby become a natural choice for the next flight. Thus was born, happy to help. Have a look. We are proud of our customer service. But you have to fly KLM to experience it. That's why for one week, we decided to help out everyone. Even people who don't fly KLM. To do this, we set up a special 24-7 Happy to Help Control Center at the Amsterdam Airport Schiphol, where we track down travelers who are in need of help. Of course, we found many people with help from our staff all around the world, but most by constantly scanning Twitter for hundreds of travel-related search words. Most problems could be solved in a tweet. 
but some needed a bit more attention. We had a speedboat taxi ready in the Hudson River to beat New York traffic. Well, yeah, it's a lot of more better than like, being in the traffic. A car in Amsterdam to pick up passports. And a motorbike in Hong Kong to track down forgotten items. We gave Eva a wake-up call for her early flight. Good morning, Eva. This is your wake-up call. Provided a comfy bed for passengers who got stuck at the airport overnight. A speed tour of Amsterdam for people who had a couple of hours layover. Pictures, it will be gone in just a few seconds. Sang a lullaby for Sean, who couldn't sleep. A honeymoon transfer to the gate for Tom and Kelly. And got Jill in touch with her boy band crush to get her through her delay. And much, much more. You're going to be a flight attendant. It's been amazing. We helped out thousands of people flying other airlines all over the world, with millions following what we did online. So to everyone who doesn't fly KLM, have a safe trip. And to everyone who does, remember, we're always happy to help. Now when you create something like this, look at the level of employee engagement. Look at how an employee can make a difference to a customer and create an experience of a lifetime. What does it do for the brand? What does it do in terms of the sheer word of mouth and the very positive thoughts that get created around the brand? Now what they started off as a one week project has now become a part of KLM's core strategy in terms of customer relationship. So now let's look at what did they do? Customer service or prospect service is the best way to retain and attract new customers. And engaging in conversation with consumers, consumers doing things that surprise them, that delight them, results in a very, very powerful bonding. Let me take the example of Kotak Bank, hashtag banking. How different is your bank from other banks? It is extremely important for a new age bank to gain and retain mind and market share by providing its younger customers a reason to choose Kotak as their bank of choice. Thus was created, hashtag banking. In the world of banking, where every bank had similar value propositions, it was very difficult to create differentiation. Yet, for Kotak Mahindra Bank, it was the need of the art to gain mind and market share. With the media consumption habits of the youth changing rapidly towards mobile and native social platforms, Kotak Mahindra needed to build a strong digital brand proposition. Kotak Mahindra launches Hashtag Banking the world's first banking channel on Twitter. All a Kotak customer had to do was send tweets with designated hashtags through Twitter. Users could simply use a tweet to locate the nearest ATM or recharge mobile or DTH. Hashtag banking allowed users to even book movie tickets, buy books through a tweet and even pre-order them. But how did we do something that has never been done before? We created a cloud-based listening server deeply integrated with Twitter using its API. We also created a social messaging server integrated with the core banking platform of Kotak. The moment a user sent a tweet, our listening server passed it instantly and passed it securely to the messaging server and then onwards to the bank's core system. Once the request was authenticated and processed, the response or confirmation was tweeted back to the user using a direct message. Hashtag banking has been a runaway hit with all major publications covering its impact on banking in India. Hashtag banking has also received international acclaim. Till date, thousands of customers have registered for hashtag banking, generating tens of thousands of requests. However, the biggest gain has been in terms of brand impact, with key brand score having gone up by 10%, making Kotak Mahindra the leading new age digital bank in India today.
What has Kotec achieved through this effort? Native platforms are customers' mediums of choice. Brands benefit by understanding this and working to get their product to work in those systems. And impact is felt on brand scores as well as revenues. Now look at it from a customer's perspective. You are allowing a bank customer to interact with you in the simplest and easiest possible way. You are respecting that customer's time. You are respecting that customer's privacy. You are giving the customer the freedom of choice. You are giving that customer a bouquet of benefits that accrue to you through a medium that you are so comfortable using. And I think that is taking the banking relationship to a completely different level. Uh, let me take an example of a gorilla marketing. I am not going to tell you much. Just watch. Watch, listen, Burger King. Listen, Burger King. Quit messing with my mind. Quit messing with my emotions. You're watching a 15 second Burger King ad, which is unfortunately not enough time to explain all the fresh ingredients in the Whopper sandwich. But I got an idea. Okay, Google, what is the Whopper burger? According to Wikipedia, the Whopper is a burger consisting of a flame-grilled quarter-pound beef patty, sesame seed bun, mayonnaise, lettuce, tomato, pickles, ketchup, and sliced onion. The problem is the definitions are coming from the Whopper's Wikipedia page. People trolled the absolute hell out of Burger King by constantly changing what Wikipedia said. Patty made with 100% medium-sized child. After a few back and forth entries, Burger King eventually restored the original content. Google says it made changes to stop its devices from responding. At first, Google had said it would fix it, but then apparently Burger King released additional ads last night that still trigger it. So, wow. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. What is the Whopper Burger? Oh, it did work. It did work. For the results 9.3 billion global impressions 135 million dollars in earned media trending topic on youtube facebook twitter and google trends burger king's most talked about tv spot in history started a debate around the limits of advertising and invasive technology listen was this innovative yes it's pretty smart but the future does scare me and also it does shine a light on the very real problem we're going to have with integrated smart household okay google Thank you. Whatever. Now, how clever is that? I mean, there is somebody there who has thought about this, and he has taken guerrilla marketing to a completely different level. How much of guts it would have taken to approve something like this? How well prepared? would Burger King have been to face the media onslaught? What a challenge it would have been to take on Google and doing it effortlessly and, and creating tremendous saliency. Now listen, I, I, I'm not for a moment saying that the intrusion in terms of privacy is desirable. But I'm just talking about the risk-taking ability. I'm talking about the out-of-box thinking. I'm talking about opportunities that are available in the environment that a brand custodian is leveraging for his brand. So BK recognized the Google Home as a new touch point and gambled, gambled on it being set up near TVs and gambled on that successfully. So when they started this onslaught, they felt they could activate the home automation and, and, and they succeeded very well. Let me take you through a production innovation, a product innovation. Video games, we all know that the community, the connectivity, the chance to enter new worlds and, and, and a virtual world which is very different. Gamers modified and hacked their controllers to build devices they could use for their games. 
Microsoft listened and built the Xbox adaptive controller, an innovative controller designed for people with limited mobility. It's, it's a very, very touching uh, piece of uh, work. Have a look, please. I only have one. <laughs> when I'm playing with a regular controller, there's some things that don't work for me. I never thought it was unfair. I just thought, hey, this is the way it is and it's not going to change. We wanted to create a new controller for gamers with limited mobility that felt natural for them. My name is Ian. I'm Taylor. My name is Owen. And I am nine and a half years old. Yes, this morning we're revealing the top rated Super Bowl commercials. Starring some unforgettably charismatic young people. I want to show you setting up the Xbox Adaptive Controller. This box, it's accessible from the very beginning. It was my first time playing in a tournament with gamers of all abilities. I can hit the buttons just as fast as they can. You can do stuff you might never be able to do in real life. Disabled people can be on the same playing field as others. One of the biggest fears early on is, how will Owen be viewed by the other kids? <laughs> He's not different when he plays. Now everyone can play. Can we have a big round of applause for that, please? You know, just look at the impact. Everyone loves gaming. And then there are some people who cannot game. And then you listen to the audience. And then you create gaming for the less abled. And aren't you bringing in a completely new dimension of happiness into their lives? And I think this product innovation was possible because of digital, because of the ability to listen, being able to see what others are doing with the product and building a product that is for their needs. Uh, Gillette on demand, <laughs> I think it was spoken to by the earlier speaker. Gillette claimed a US market share of 70% as recently as 2010. But it fell to 54% in 2016 thanks to Harry's and Dollar Shave Club. Now combined for a 12.2% market share up from 7.2% in 2015. In order to counter the threat to its dominance in the razor category, Gillette has launched Gillette On Demand, a new way to sell direct to consumers. Have a look. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are going to ship them right to you.
We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com and the party is on. Blades to Gillette On Demand. You've seen the Gillette one, and this is one of my favorites. Child Focus, the Belgian Center for Missing Children, never gives up hope for finding a missing child. They created a daily reminder to make sure these children are never forgotten. It's absolutely brilliant. Idea convinced the king to replace his portrait and got the approval of the Royal Mint, the Secretary of Finance, and finally, all 19 governments of the Eurozone. All this to produce and circulate 1 million two euro coins with the face of Liam van den Brande, a child who has been missing for over 20 years. We then commissioned Luke Lurks, the same designer who created the common side of all euro coins ever made, to convert the picture of Liam's missing poster into a unique 3D design suitable for a coin. Finally, on International Missing Children's Day, Child Focus, the Belgian Centre for Missing Children, brought the coins of hope into circulation, inviting the Belgian Minister of Finance to formally launch the coins. Zelda is the boodschap van een munt. Zo symbolisch en zo uitgesproken als in dit geval. Each coin also shows the website to renew attention for all missing children. We even used a live database relevant to each country. Thanks to the PR value of our campaign, we got the support from a major bank and supermarket chain, all the way to local shops. A direct mail was sent to our Prime Minister and many other politicians, athletes and celebrities, asking them to share a picture of the coin and make Liam's face just as famous as theirs. Both national and international news channels quickly followed with a lot of attention on all missing children, resulting in one journalist who managed to locate one of the children in our campaign, Mansour Safi, who had been missing for almost a year. What a difference it makes to the life of that one child. I think this is a very humane way of interacting and making a difference. I'm going to skip this in the interest of time. McDonald's presents. In summary, brand loyalty is a thing of the past. Brands have to focus on what it is that consumers seek, not just from products, but also from their life experiences. Brands that need to integrate with the consumer's life have to participate at the consumer's time 
and at the consumer's terms and not their own. Digital helps in twinning all aspects of a consumer's life. A brand has to work with that. Indian digital marketing, some key issues, I am just provoking thought and hope that the rest of the day we find answers to some of this. Are we putting in too much effort and emphasis on data and analytics? Are we losing sight of the big picture? You saw some examples here. How much of it was analytics driven and how much of it was from the heart, from the, from the feeling, from the emotion? Let's not lose sight of that. Location, data, are we becoming too intrusive? Are we forever sending messages, irritating and making life difficult for the consumer and chasing him away from us? Respect for the consumer. Are we genuinely respecting the consumer enough? Or is it a game for us, marketers? Innovation and creativity, how high is it on our agenda? Do we care enough for it? Are we willing to push the envelope? Are we willing to stick our neck out, even at the risk of it getting chopped? And finally, spends. Are we taking the big bets when it comes to digital? Thank you very much, friends. It's a pleasure speaking to all of you. Thank you, Mr. Ramakrishnan. Uh, what a brilliant presentation about uh, breaking the mold. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I have uh, Mr. Thomas Barter kindly coming on, on the stage uh, to give a token of appreciation to Mr. Ramakrishnan. Oh, it's been a brilliant morning session so far. We can have a round of applause. Come on, everybody. All right, this event wouldn't have been possible without the support of our partners. A big thank you to our presenting partner, Google India, co-powered partner, MX Player, India's number one entertainment uh, platform. And uh, uh, we're going to have a look at the ABs of our sponsors. Here it is.